if chapter 317 of My Hero Academia didn't hurt, didn't hit you in the feels, then fam, I gotta say, maybe you ain't human, fam. Maybe you something else because chapter 317, I am gonna lie. The scenes in particular between Deku and All Might, that shit was heart shattering to say the least to see what was once this bond of a fatherly i don't want to say grandfather but more so like a fatherly figure of all might to deku the man that he worshiped and idolized that he had you know memorabilia figurines all sorts of stuff his whole life he made him he gave him you know a dream he wanted to be just like him to see it go from that type of relationship to what it has ultimately become and who deku is today i know it sounds like a broken record i know i've said it so many times throughout this this arc especially but my hero academia and deku himself has just become so much different everything has changed and deku has gone darker than i ever imagined i never thought that my hero academia would go to where we're at right now to the point where deku looked like a damn monster like i, I got some one punch man garo vibes for a moment there when i was looking at what he looked like in this chapter and my god the irony in this chapter the irony of Deku's character wanting to become and and doing all the heroic deeds he possibly can at the cost of him becoming a monster there's so much to take from this chapter and what went down without further ado people we got to talk a little bit about that my hero academia it, it's greatness fam it's greatness but an emotional greatness that I ain't gonna lie it, it definitely hit different let's talk about it For no matter how you know, get it done no matter Okay, people, so the chapter opened up with a really detailed close-up image of Deku, and I believe it was called Scars, Blood, Faith, which automatically that sounds gnarly as hell, that sounds metal as hell, that sounds like... Okay, I see where we're going with this. This is dark because don't forget, last left off, it was off one leaving a booby trap at that mansion that went off with a bomb, with an explosion. So we open up this one, which I ain't gonna lie, like probably the anime will handle it a little bit differently. But, you know, when they just all there, the heroes are gathered around saying, yo, we survived that explosion by the skin of our teeth. I wish they would have showed just a little bit more of how they survived because they were in the middle of talking and then boom, explosion. Now, granted, they're heroes and they're very calculated. They probably you know deduce that hey this very well could be a trap we gotta be on our p's and q's so there probably was some preventative measures in place i just wish we would have seen it because it's like oh explosion last chapter you flip the page hey we survived by the skin of our teeth you didn't see it but we survived and also a character that i'm kind of torn on their survival nagant lady nagant apparently she survived but she's damn near on death's door to the point where they can't get any intel on the league on all for one or anything like that because she is just so damn down bad she is to the point where she's almost dead so she survived but she's damn near on death's door at this particular point i mean you know it's either she was gonna die or, or not obviously she's going to live because it would be i mean i guess they could pull like what they did with night eye how night eye survived until he got to the hospital and then he died but yeah nagant surviving i'm imagining she is going to survive and i'm imagining down the road whether you know the next big war that goes down the next big battle nagant is probably going to be there at deku's side to say i was wrong i did things the wrong way i'm here for you know the payback to kind of restore order and trust in this hero in particular i may not have trust in the structure of this society but if he's going to be charging you know leading the charge then i'm gonna rock with him and his ideals and him truly wanting for what's best because remember deku is going to be number one hero at some given point right the anime used to hype it up this is the story of how i became number one hero so that's where i'm guessing they're gonna go with nagant i mean i can't say that i'm thrilled that she survived considering her whole body exploded thanks to you know a preventative measure from all for one but it's like eh. and the heroes are debating about bringing other heroes into the fold to find out you know everything about Deku because a lot of heroes are quitting and that's been par for the course with this arc don't forget like they've just been seeing the city and a lot of these heroes were not built for this when they got on to this I've said this before I'll say it again all might was rocking it all might had everything you barely had to lift a finger you could just walk around with a cape and motherfuckers would be like oh shit you're a hero so now when push comes to shove and it's not all you know I'm saying roses and dandelions you actually got to put in work some aren't built for it and then on top of that you got all the scrutiny and criticism and everything yeah people are going to fold but it reminds me of a quote that i love from one of my favorite songs you there when it's bright better be there when it's dark 
You wasn't there for the ride, don't be there when I park. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Heroes, you, you better be a hero through and through because a hero, Destegoro, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, forgive me if I said that wrong, but uh, he was actually one of the people that was actually finding, you know, the false heroes that were spies for the league and things like that. He actually hung it up. He said, yo, I can't do it between everything that's going on right now. And then on top of that, the scrutiny from the media and shit like that. I, I'm just human. I, I have to hang it up. And uh, you can see that even Endeavor was kind of a little disappointed in it. Like, yo, this dude really went the, the distance and then he's going to fold here and now like holy shit so again heroes left and right like just imagine between all the people that died all the people that got hurt everything that happened in the war and then little by little these heroes keep on folding and you know calling it quits retiring and shit this is honestly being a whole restructure of the hero system the hero society when all is said and done depending on what goes down what becomes of society it's going to have radical departures of what we've had and honestly some of the things that stain probably wanted is actually happening without him having having to interfere because a lot of the phonies are falling and that was something that Stain didn't like he didn't like phonies that like yeah yeah I'm a hero and they didn't really embody it so Stain is kind of getting what he wants and he also showed up in the chapter but we'll get to that in a little bit fam I promise and I just got to throw out there that those heroes that are leaking info to the media now that they retired y'all some lame so y'all actually proved to be frauds to begin with but thankfully the media hasn't completely caught wind of exactly what's going down with Deku and one for all and Mount Lady brings up the fact that well why hasn't all for one gone to the media with that that would be like a great ploy right like let everyone know like yo it's him which i still wouldn't be surprised if he did it down the road it just makes me wonder as well like okay why isn't he going to the media with that what is it is it because once he obtains the power he doesn't want people to know that he has that power because he still wants to maintain his version of order or why doesn't he honestly that sounds like it'd be brilliant like make everybody hate deku which would throw him off even more and it'd be a lot harder for him to protect people if everybody hated him so i would if i was off one go to the media say yo this is the reason reason why y'all dying this is the reason why i'm doing what i'm doing y'all give me this kid we, we call it squares and then automatically that will put conflict between the heroes and the civilians even more because they're gonna be like give him the fucking kid what are you doing and maybe it's just me but i felt a little bit away of endeavor still ducking shoto's calls like fam we just went through this whole melodramatic family you know ordeal and things like that and now you're ducking his calls now you don't want to answer because of the last line where he said like yo we're gonna work on you know taking down and stopping toya slash dobby together and he's not answering his calls and you know he's texting him and shit like that like you didn't learn yo you gotta you gotta communicate with your family fam like nah you're doing it wrong we just went through some shit and i'm sure somebody's gonna tell me like no fenev it's not that well that's what it seemed like to me stop dodging his calls and his text messages i don't care what's going on you could text back and just say yo fam some shit is going down right now we'll talk a little bit but like right now you know what i'm saying like don't be a shit bag. We went through this, okay? And then is where the chapter starts to get really nitty gritty because apparently Deku already ran into the second hired gun. Just like Lady Nagant was a hired assassin to take him down, he already ran into the next one and apparently took this person down. And I just got to keep it real. There is a possibility. It did feel like, and I said this with the Nagant stuff, and I'll say it here, it could very well be that this was supposed to be a lot longer and this was supposed to be like really long, lengthy things that was going down because like yo the big announcement when all for one you know it was like oh shit he got all these hired assassins coming after Deku I thought that this was going to be an ongoing thing but we go from the Nagant arc that was what handful of chapters to a page and the next hired gun is out cold now granted it could be that some of the other ones are going to be a lot longer so there's that but I don't know it just feels like there are some things that are getting sped through unfortunately and I've said that at My Hero Academia with everything that's going on it is going a lot quicker than it used to I mean for crying out loud if you were watching the anime do you remember how kind of the pacing was for the class a versus b where that was just like some training shit that took a while we go from that to big baddies and assassins that are coming for deku's neck being solved in a single page but then seeing deku's design as all might is speaking to him he looks like an absolute monster it's crazy because you know all might is still all might he's still worried about him he still cares about him but you could tell and this is a great demonstration of what has happened to heroes where you know the stress and everything like deku is going through probably the most stress of any hero right right now because he knows that all of this is them chasing him down for his one for all power he's the one that like kind of he knows that if the press got a hold of this what would happen and shit like that so all of that stress on top of the fact that he has to take down these assassins coming for his neck on top of the fact that all might you know there's a lot on his plate so think about the mental stress that's going in on him that is something that i feel horikoshi has done immensely well with deku's character like not only is this a physical manifestation of the stress and everything this is a mental demonstration as well deku's different because the circumstances are 
are different. He's not just hanging out in UA anymore. He's actually going through it. But when All Might says, you ain't been eating your lunch. And Deku says to him, yo, you don't need to tag along anymore, All Might. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm capable of what you were capable of at 100% and there's no recoil. Basically saying, you're unneeded. I, I got this. Don't worry. And the stark contrast from the boy that, you know what I'm saying? He was hugging All Might to death. He was like, I want to be All Might naming my attacks after All Might. Like, that is crazy. That is almost like a son with a parent and whatnot and, you know, looking up to the parent and then eventually circumstances lead to the point you go from I want to be just like my dad to, yo, dad, I got this don't even worry about it you know what I'm saying like not right now like I don't I don't care about your lunch fam and the monologue from All Might added even more of just how heartbreaking this shit was where he's like yo I get it that he wants to keep me out of harm's way and things like that but he's stressing the hell out and this was one of the lines the most that kind of hit me because again it was just a real real big demonstration of where Deku was at right now when All Might said he don't even look back at me anymore like you know Deku used to get a a, a tickle get a giggle feel great just to look back and see oh might is there oh shit now he doesn't even do that anymore and again that's a demonstration and great development of things have gotten to the point where it's too much for deku and all might realizes that and recognizes it and then when he basically continues to monologue that he wants to tell deku to rest and things like that as he's reaching out to deku deku doesn't reach back and all might falls down and the lunch falls and oh my god that was so emotional and i know the anime is gonna kill that even more but this is this is something else this was emotional this is a real big character development in a very interesting way and again uh my hero academia going down an alley that we didn't expect i never expected that deku would go this dark dude went from spider-man to venom or some shit like that that's just the way it is and while all that is going on again deku not even turning around or nothing as all might falls down stain is watching and it's interesting because i'm curious to see what stain's perspective on this is because he's kind of like telling the details of what he's seen with this you know so-called hero and he describes how deku has multiple quirks and he sounds like all for one or a no move and that he apparently goes around helping people but he's covered in blood and dirt that hides scars so you could tell that stain has been on deku's trail for quite some time now because i'm imagining his ideals haven't strayed too far from what he initially thought of like yo if you're not a real hero then you gotta go so i'm wondering what he thinks of this hero that is actually being helpful being a hero but he's kind of really all messed up and you know just in a different zone because if he even recognizes is that that's the same kid that he fought with all those well i don't want to say years ago whenever the heck that fight went down he's probably gonna say holy shit and again i think stain would be an interesting comrade for at the very least the time being to work with deku because he's also dark and i think if anybody he kind of almost is mirroring stain right now granted he's not hunting heroes on some garo stain shit but he's so dark he's so entrenched in the darkness that it's taking him for a turn for not the worst but in terms of for his own sake the worst and the last line of dialogue was looking at him you'd never guess he was a hero and you see the sick design the change of deku he looks again straight up like a monster honestly this chapter fabulous insane dark gritty developing in a very again interesting and dark way and man i never expected my hero academia to do this i never expected my hero academia to take deku down this route but i'm welcoming of it because the the mood calls for it the scenery calls for it the setting calls for it where we're at right now in the story absolutely demands for it to be this way but that heartbreaking stuff between deku and all might man the when the fanboy goes rogue <laughs> Very curious what you guys think about this. For starters, just quickly, do you think that they're speeding through some stuff? Like, do you think maybe Nagant was supposed to be a lot longer? The next one was supposed to be a lot longer and it was, you know, handled the next assassin in one page. What do you think is staying up to? What is he trying to accomplish by stalking Deku and All Might? How did you feel about that scene between All Might and Deku and All Might reached out and Deku didn't reach back and didn't even look back at this particular point. And your overall thoughts and expectations for my hero moving forward into 318 and beyond. This series just keeps getting darker and darker. And maybe that's Horikoshi's response also. Not only just with the story in general, but to the fandom and a lot of things that was said in the past of how lighthearted it was. He probably made it purposely lighthearted because he knew at some given point he was going to take it this direction. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of my other social media links of course in the description below i'm from Neverworld, and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day
piece in. Yo, poor old Mike, man. His heart must be absolutely shattered seeing this boy that he's damn near raised up to what he's become, become this monster. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 